Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got iconic actress Ruta Lee with me. So welcome, Ruta. I am so thrilled to be with you, Michael. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your wonderful audience with me. I I really appreciate getting to say hello to your part of the country. Thank you. Well, it's just a real blessing to have you on the uh, program. You know, I remember all of the stuff that you did back in the day. You know, it's been a year or two, but I remember, and I'll tell you why. In the late 70s, my parents got cable TV. And, wow, you were and rich. The, oh, yeah. That was a big deal. And the only channel, basically, that you got was TBS. Uh huh. And they showed everything from the 50s and 60s. So I saw all of it, you know, when oh, how in wonderful. my early teenage years and just absolutely loved it. Absolutely. Well, then that was a part of my life that was very important. Uh, because the, the big steps that I made <clears throat> were, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, uh, excuse me, while I sip a big glass of water. <laughs> I've got mine here. I'm drinking some uh, Perrier. Anyway, I <clears throat> was doing a lot of television in the very late, late, late 50s. Yeah. And all through the 60s and the 70s. And then in, in the 80s and the 90s, I went to, to game shows and things, as you know, with High Rollers and Alex Trebek. And um, uh, so I'm so glad that you were a part of my growing up as well as you growing up because you were just <laughs> a little kid. Yeah. No, I, I really enjoyed it. My uh, uh, my mother was a big fan of High Rollers, so we watched that all the time. And my, my father was a... Uh, a Western fan, especially like James Garner, Maverick. Oh, and well, so, then so we'd watch all those together too. Well, so, that's yeah. marvelous. That's great. Uh, Alex Trebek, of course, was one of my best buddies. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he, in fact, he did the foreword to my book, which is called consider your ass kissed. And I, know, I great title. Consider, 
I consider his ass kissed all the time, my <laughs> darling, my darling Alex Trebek. And uh, amazingly enough, he and both his first and last second wife uh, are exceedingly good friends of mine. We're very, very good friends right from the beginning. And the nice part is that the two wives are very good friends, which oh, is love that. quite incredible. Yeah. Uh, and Alex, I saw Alex maybe a week, five days before he died. And we were, all of us were together. It was his first wife and husband, second wife and Alex and me, the five, the five of us, the five musketeers. And uh, what, a, what a sweet memory that is. And to have him do the forward to my book uh, is a real blessing. Yeah. Well, you, you two were so good on the, on the uh, high rollers together. Do you and know that? It doesn't surprise me that you stayed close. Alex, of course, is far known, better known for his, his later show at Jeopardy. And, and uh, I just can't get over how very important he became to absolutely everybody. He really you know? did. And, and the fact that he took the time to do a forward to my book is, is rather wonderful and amazing. We were friends for a lot of years and we did a lot of traveling together. And listen, Michael, what most people don't know, even the, the avid Jeopardy people, you got a glint of his sense of humor. Yeah. But nobody got it full whack right on, which he had. He had the wildest, most wonderful sense of humor. And being part Russian and having a Russian father, he had the greatest accents. He could do really? American Indian. He could do Eastern Indian. He could do uh, somebody from Nairobi. He could do somebody from the Swiss Alps. He was just incredible. And he used those accents in all the jokes he told which he did constantly. So I miss him. Uh, I see the ladies all the time, but I miss him. Yeah, I think we all do. You know, he became such a part of, you know, our evenings over the decades that, uh, yeah, we all, we're all feeling the loss. I, I can only imagine what it would be like if you were very close with him. Yeah, we, we, he lived practically down the street from me, you know, it was a mile away or so, but yeah. nevertheless, always in close proximity. And we didn't see each other every 20 minutes, but uh, we saw each other a lot. And when we were together, it was family time and no holds barred and just great. I love that. I love that. So I'm assuming that you're sitting in your home. I'm sitting in my junky office and my darling assistant is sitting across the way. And uh, it doesn't look junky at all. <laughs> oh, it's junky. Trust me. <laughs> this is the one room in the house that I don't worry about. Am I going to have company? The company yeah. exists of two dogs, two cats and a bird. I think that's pretty good company. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. The, how does the bird get along with the dogs and the cats? Beautifully. Uh, she chases all of them. She, <laughs> I, I call her she. I don't know if it's a he or a she. And it's very difficult to know with a golden crested cockatoo. Yeah. But she chases everybody. And she just thinks that is great fun. We put her on the table. And, and you know, she knows her hours, which is just incredible. And she'll start screaming that she wants to come out and play on the table. And it's usually after supper. Because if it's just myself and my housekeeper, we hang out in the kitchen. No yeah. lovely little dinettes or dining rooms or anything that we go to. We just hang out in the kitchen. And the bird, <laughs> excuse me, knows when dinner is over and starts screaming to come out and play with us. And the cats, of course, come up and jump on the table to see the, the bird. And the bird bites and tells them to go away. <laughs> She's she's really so the bird's quite, running the house is what you're saying. That's about it. That's about <laughs> it, darling. Well, so you're in kind of an iconic home, you know, tell us a little bit about that because it's, it's got some pretty famous previous owners and you've had some pretty impressive guests come through. Oh, yes. Yes, I have. Um, to start with, it's in the infamous Laurel Canyon, which yeah. has become uh, rather iconic because of the music industry and the people that uh, have lived in and around Laurel Canyon. Yeah. 
uh, it's, it's a great area because I'm in the middle of a huge city sitting on six acres. The six acres are mostly uphill, you know, but nevertheless, That's a lot of land, though. it's a lot of land to have in the middle of Hollywood. And we've got the San Fernando Valley on one side and, of course, Los Angeles on the other. It was once owned by Rita Hayworth and Orson Welles. Amazing. And I keep walking up and down the stairs and rubbing my fanny on the walls, <laughs> assuming all of Rita's glamour will come off. And Lord knows I've tried, and it's so nice to have had her. And then Margaret O'Brien, who is a very good friend and, of course, beloved by the world, yeah. um, used to come swim in the pool here. Really? Which is an incredible pool because it's on the second level and it's raised up into the mountain. Ooh. It's quite amazing. That is amazing. But uh, I have entertained a lot of interesting people in this house, a lot of show people, and a few politicos. But the most interesting for me was to entertain the former president of Lithuania, which happens to be my background, Lithuanian. Yes. Uh, I entertained him with a group of about 50 people or whatever. And, and then just a week or so ago, I entertained the current president of Lithuania, who was mentored by the original president, Valdas Adamkus, and now the president is Gitanas Nauseda. And oh, this is interesting. It was the sad part because the president I had met earlier in Lithuania when I was there the last time, he came to see me and we, we visited. And uh, this was before he was president. Yeah. And this time when he came, he brought his beautiful wife, Diana, with him. And my best girlfriend is Anne Gillian, if you know the actress. Yeah, uh, she starred in um, It's a Living, I think the name of the series was. And of course, lots of television. She was also one of the stars of Sugar Babies on Broadway. And she was invited to come because she's of Lithuanian descent. Okay. And her maiden name is Nauseda as is the president's. Now, Lithuania is a small country, so I figure somewhere down the long line, oh, yeah. they're related. Somebody got into that cabbage patch, and, <laughs> and there they are. And the sad part of all of this, oh my God, is that the day before she was to come to lunch, she and her husband were in a terrible, horrible automobile accident. Oh, her husband is still in ICU, she has finally come home, but she is in, of course, casts and broken everything. Thank God her hands are okay. She at first thought they were bad, but she has to be hoisted in and out of the bed on one of those lift things that they do automatically. It, it's so sad. And she was so looking forward to meeting and finding out if back in their roots, they are related. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope at some point she gets another uh, chance. That A car wreck is so devastating. I've, I've been through one. It's been a decade since it happened, but it uh, it's something that is not easy to, to come out of, and it takes a long time to recover from that. Oh, yes. And, I mean, it's, it's not like she's 29 anymore. You know, it's yep. a little different. Uh, she's an incredibly darling girl and a very gifted and talented one. She she sings, she dances, she walks, she talks, she does everything, you know, and uh, and she's just so marvelous. Anyway, well, I'll pray for her helping. recovery. I hope it happens quick. Thank you, thank you. Send up a few prayers. Sure. Uh, I, I was hoping she would be able to get it together by the time we did our big Thalian event coming up yeah. in uh, December, but uh, I'm afraid not. That's going to be a while. But the nice part of all of this is that. We were both invited by President Nauseda of Lithuania to come to Lithuania in August uh, for the Lithuanian Folk Dance Festival, which means that they bring in young, gorgeous folk dancers from all over the world. I mean, from Brazil, 
from Africa, from everywhere that there are Lithuanians. And it's amazing how many Lithuanians there are all, all around the world. Um, take account one of these days, Michael. See how many Lithuanians you have in your listening audience and your and your viewing audience. Okay. I do know that uh, our podcast is listened to in Lithuania. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Oh, well, then in that case, labas <laughs> visiem, which was hello to everybody. I assumed it was hello, but... <laughs> With me, you can never be sure, my dear. Did did you ever get a chance to meet Rita or Orson? Oh, yes. Not not Orson. I'm sorry to say not Orson, but I did meet Rita because, as you may know, Michael, uh, Debbie Reynolds and I have been for almost 70 years the mother superiors of an organization called the Thalians. Yes. And the yeah, Thalians tell us was, about that. I will. The Thalians was a group put together by a young crowd of, of Hollywood types that got tired of being called hard drinking, noisy, pot smoking idiots that had nothing to contribute to society. And they would sort of say, you know, we hang around the piano and sing songs and do stuff anyway, have a few drinks. Why don't we um, put a show together and sell tickets? So they did. And they raised a few dollars. And in the process, they sent out Jane Mansfield and uh, Vander, uh, what the heck's her name? Mamie Van, Mamie Van Doren. Oh, okay. Talk about two Buzumi ladies. <laughs> Woo wee! And they did a good job and they came back and they said, well, all the good diseases have been taken by different charities. And, but they discovered a gentleman that helped um, children yeah. who were emotionally disturbed. And he said that an emotionally disturbed child is like a rotting apple in a barrel. The whole barrel will be gone and rotten if you don't take care of it. Yeah. So he was dealing with children. We came in and founded the Thalians. And Thalia was a Greek goddess, a muse. She was the goddess of comedy. She was yeah. also the one that took in the straying lambs. So it seemed like an appropriate title, Thalia being our goddess. Yeah, so I we, love that. We, I was going to ask you what that was uh, uh, in reference to, but yes, that, that uh -huh. makes perfect sense. That is a good title. Yes, and the goddess of comedy. And so we uh, we assumed that name and, and raised millions and millions of dollars as we went down the line. We were the first building to go in at the big, huge Cedar sinai complex here in Los Angeles. And we were Hollywood for mental health. And we serviced people from pediatric through geriatric cases with research and, and uh, everything needed Amazing. for mental health and treatment, of course. And then we woke up to the fact a lot of years later when a friend of mine involved with UCLA and Operation Mend came to us and said, you know, you have been missing the boat on something. You're dealing with from babies to old people, but you're not concerned with the people that give us the most. And that's the lovely, beautiful young men and women who put their lives on the line, no matter yeah. where we send them in this world. It could be the darkest hole, a real pit hole, and they come back and sometimes they're overlooked and they slip through the cracks and we forget about them. Yeah. And so we took on the challenge from Operation Mend. Op Mend heals broken, fractured bodies. Yeah. And Thalians heals broken and fractured minds and spirits. Love that. And I'm so proud of what we do. And we don't do because we can't afford to at this point, after COVID, it's been very tough sure. to do our great big, huge galas that, you know, were 12, 1500 people. Hotels and things have become so expensive. Really Everything is so expensive yeah. that you wind up doing an event for the sake of doing an event rather than raising money right. for our veterans. So we are, we now do a smaller event, a gala, nevertheless. We do two a year, and this one uh, will we have coming up at Christmas, 
uh, well, the beginning of Christmas, uh, December 2nd. And we're honoring one of the great Americans that came out of show business, or maybe he came into show business out of being a great American, and that's Gary Sinise. And we love Gary Sinise. Doing so much for our veterans. So he is our honoree this year. And mind you, we've had honorees from Frank Sinatra through Whoopi Goldberg, through Sammy Davis, through uh, you name it, you know, Lucille Ball. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's quite everybody. Fun. Everybody. Uh, and and uh, I think Gary Sinise is going to be absolutely wonderful. And so we have that event coming up. So to all of your viewers today, I will humbly say, if you have, you know, $5, $50, $500, $500, $500,000, please consider the Thalians, T-H-A-L-I-A-N-S dot org and see what we're all about and make a contribution. And please, 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 if you do that, consider your ass kissed. <laughs> well, and that's a great segue into your book. You know, let's talk a little bit about that. You know, what's what's the book about? Is it is uh, is it a memoir or is it uh, is something else? It's it's sort of a memoir. Yeah, uh, it it covers a lot of territory. I I talk a lot about the wonderful people that I've known. One or two not so wonderful, but almost everybody. <laughs> I, I happen to love very much. And I, I think those of us in show business who are blessed enough to make a living doing something that we really love have a great deal to say thanks to the Almighty for, you know. And let's put it this way, that those of us in show business have a lot more laughs than people selling insurance. Let's put it that way. It just <laughs> makes an enormous difference. And uh, I'm so, so very pleased to, to talk about the book because the title came from George Pinocchio. Okay. It didn't come from him, but he has, has been a longtime friend. And he, for the sake of your audience that may not know, is ABC television's red carpet man and the maven, the Hollywood maven yeah. that does the reportage. I didn't even realize there was a red carpet man. But well, I, that's what we he, call him because he does about it. And yeah, he I, does. Oh, he does all the the, uh, the the big red carpet deals. Yeah. And he came to me one day because he heard me say, consider your ass kiss to those lovely people in our audiences that either came to see me or came to see the Thalians event and, and contributed lots of money and bought a ticket for a lot of money or the people that turned on a television set because I was on or came to see me in a show. Yeah. I would say, consider your ass kissed. And George came to me one day and he said, if you ever, ever get this book written and get it published, that should be the title of it. Consider your ass kissed. He's right. Or was right. And and I and I stuck with it. And now I've got to tell you, Michael, as you will know, you're from the South. There were some people in the deep, deep South that kind of took a little bit of umbrage at uh, <laughs> uh, asked, consider your ass kissed. Mm -hmm. And all I could say to those darling people was, if Jesus could ride into Jerusalem on his ass, I think I could kiss it. All right? right? That's pretty funny. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, the, the book is, like I say, a little bit about me and, and my beginnings and my incredible mother that uh, did so right by me and gave me lessons. I mean, you're talking about two people that came from the old country that didn't speak English well and, and had yep. very hard lives, but she didn't stint and let me have music lessons and dance lessons and all of that stuff. And then saw to it that we somehow wound up in California because clearly uh, my mother took my kindergarten teacher's advice in giving me lessons because my kindergarten teacher said, she's a little different than the rest of the kids in our school, um, give her lessons. And my mother wound up thinking that I was her answer to Shirley Temple. I was Lithuania Shirley Temple. 
And when they wanted to leave Montreal, which was up to their noses in snow every winter, and go to a warmer climate, my father thought Hollywood was fine, but he was thinking Hollywood, Florida. My mother was thinking Hollywood, California. And God bless her for thinking that. Yeah, uh, because yeah. she made the right is, choice. Well, she did. This is where I grew up, and this is where I got into the business, and uh, and I've had an incredibly good life, and uh, I'm 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 just so so very very grateful, and it's sort of interesting because I've I've done a lot of movies, but mostly I'm known from television. Yeah, and when I stop to think about television. And what was so terribly big and important about it? Uh, you got to meet so very, very many people. And so I, I love television because, you know, you got to say hello, how are you to millions of people the first time you, you came on the screen. Whereas yeah. a movie was an entirely different picture. And on the stage, if you had 2000 people in the audience, that was, you know, pretty big. Uh, but, but I loved being able to say hello to a lot of people. And do you know that my most successful stint in television yeah. through my entire career was the five years that I visited on Home Shopping Network? Really? I mean, that was incredible. I, I would do all kinds of products. They would ask me to fill in for everybody. Yeah. And, and just come in and, you know, sell Capri pants or sell bathing suits or sell towels. Uh, but but I had a product that my husband had, which was the spray vitamins. Oh, yeah. That you spray in your mouth, you know, and because I remember hearing so well that the porta potties, when they were being washed out by the, the people who handled them, uh, was that, you know what they found the most? Not money, not false teeth, not anything. It was unmelted, undigested vitamin pills. Really? Uh-huh. Whereas a spray vitamin was in the lining of your mouth in no time at all. Yeah, in you seconds, it. it was in your body. So five years of doing that was really quite incredible. And I made so many lifelong television friends through that yeah i think when people are spending money on television they regard you more highly i'm not well quite that's sure. the truth and 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 a lot of people you know view those those programs and the hosts of the programs as that's kind of like a daily routine for yes that's true does that you, you know, know another lovely moment that i had i mean i've had lots of lovely moments uh you know Several, of course, were visiting on The Tonight Show, uh, oh. which was really good. But the nicest one was to visit with Johnny Carson after I'd brought my grandmother over. From oh, yeah, you have to Lithuania. tell that story. Well, I will tell you that. But uh, one of the earlier things that I dearly loved was doing a two and a half hour live talk show every day with Regis Philbin. Oh, and really? boy, did I have some experiences on that. That you and did. And that was a call in show which was most interesting because as you know, if you're doing a live show, you have a slight delay in case somebody says something totally rude and inappropriate, uh, which can happen a lot. Sure. Uh, we had like a seven second delay, but it was just astounding how many wonderful things happened on that show. And of course, working with Regis who became a very, very good friend. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and Regis is one of those people that you watched or you know watched for years. Um, and it just, it, it, it just made you feel like he was everybody's friend. You, you know, know, he was it's so inviting when he was on TV. He used to complain when we did the show together that he had done Joey Bishop and he got fired and he had done this and he had done the morning show elsewhere. And now we were together doing on this show. And he said, you know, I just, I can't seem to get anywhere. Uh, I, it's the same kind of thing over and over. Then he went to New York. And look what happened. And he yeah. called me one day and he said, Ruta, come <laughs> to New York. This is going to make an enormous difference. I, of course, was well ensconced here and I wasn't about to go try to, to break into to New York. It's one of those things of where in my book, I wrote a chapter called Coulda, Shoulda, Woulda. 
<laughs> that was one of those coulda, shoulda, wouldas. Yeah. That that I didn't do. But um, what the hell? I've had a very good life anyway. So all I can do is thank God and thank America for taking me into your living room or if you're rich into your bathroom or your bedroom or wherever. Yeah. I've gotten to know a lot of America because they've watched me through their toes at night on the tonight shows or whatever. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite memories of, of watching you on TV is there was a time in the early eighties where if you were sick and staying home from school in the morning, they showed love American style. Oh, love boat. And Fantasy Island, back to back to back. When they had, I wow! Remember, I remember one day they did Ruta Lee Day, so you were oh, all how three fun goes in a row, and and I was home, you know, with the you know, a cold or the flu or something, and uh -huh. I got to watch you the whole morning. Oh, I'm so pleased <laughs> to hear that. One of the uh, I did a, a bunch of Love American styles. One of them was with Regis Philbin and Jack <laughs> Carter, who was one of my best friends. Well, I'm sure uh, I've seen it. I'm sure you did, yeah. too. Well, I'm so pleased to hear that, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Well, you have to tell us the story about your family and your grandmother coming coming over and how that uh, uh, wow. kind of took place, because that's an amazing story. Well, it is, and I'll try to make it short. It's impossible. <laughs> and in fact, that's one of the things that I promised myself that I'm going to do. When you talk about bucket lists and, and where to go and what to do, yeah. I gave very short shrift, just one chapter to my beloved grandmother, my Lithuanian grandmother, um, in, in the book. And now I want to do a full book. You need to. On, yeah. And, and I've got to do it because so many young people, not just in America, but around the world, have no idea of what living under a communist system yeah. is, is not the vaguest idea and i think it's incumbent upon me to tell the story that is true and it's just one of many stories but mine is very true uh, uh as you know i was the first to become a citizen of the united states having been born in canada and my mother and father were on the lithuanian quota so when i became a citizen it was up to me to make out the invitations to try and get my mother out of Siberia, where she had been deported. Now, we're not talking about the intelligentsia. We're not talking about great artists or, or poets or writers that, that right. influenced the world. This was a little tiny Lithuanian peasant family. What made them richer than their neighbor maybe is that maybe they had a cow. And they were right. able to make cheese and, and milk products, you know. They were sent off to Siberia. My grandfather's legs were frozen on the cattle car that they were all shipped out to Siberia on. When they took him off and took off his boots at one of the way stations, all the flesh came off with the boots. He had gangrene. It had set in. My grandmother didn't even know because she was still on that uh, damn train to Siberia. She was dropped off in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I'm talking about around 90 years old, right? Yeah. And there she is, and somehow she survived. Somehow they, all of those people that were shipped off survived. My mother located her through the Red Cross. When I became a citizen, I started worrying about how to get her out of Siberia and later out of Lithuania. She literally hitchhiked across Lithuania to find other members of her family. Wow. And and there she was in Lithuania, now living with a cousin of mine who was taking care of her. She never learned to read or write. And a letter had come trying to say goodbye and thank you for my grandmother for all the things. Now, I had tried for some 12 years oh, from the time I was 16 on into my 20s to get my grandmother out of Siberia first, then Lithuania. Yeah. And to no avail. I wasn't getting anywhere. We would send these packages. We would send a, a, a one pound of coffee, one pound of sugar, one pound of tea, one pound of lard, one pound of butter, one pound of bacon. 
uh, in, in packages up to 40 pounds was allowed. And, and they sustained themselves on these things. And later Lithuania, the same thing, we kept sending packages. And you never were sure what the commissars took or what they took, what they got rather, I should say. Anyway, uh, I finally one day got this letter and she was dying and they were thanking us for sending all the packages that helped sustain them and put a roof on their, their little hut in, in Lithuania. And I came home and my mother was in a spate of tears and I had been working and now I started crying. And my one remaining grandparent was now either dead because it took six to eight weeks for a letter to get here. She was either dead or dying and I would never meet her. I went out with friends that night and my friends poured a lot of red wine to make me feel better. That's good friends. Uh-huh. And the more wine they poured, the more evident it became to all of us that I should do something really different and dramatic. So when I got home, what I thought was an appropriate time to call Moscow, I made a person-to-person -person call. I don't know if you remember this. I know you're a grandfather, but with the telephone company, it used to be if you paid for a person-to-person -person call, which was twice as much, you didn't pay if you didn't get the party. Right. So I made a person-to-person -person call to Nikita Khrushchev, the Kremlin, Moscow, USSR. Amazing. And that bitch operator said, how do you spell Khrushchev? <laughs> well, who the hell knew how to spell or remember Khrushchev? But nevertheless, she made the call and she got through to a Russian operator. No, 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 speak it, no speak it. Nothing to do with it. We tried for hours, kept recalling. Now, remind you, I remind you that if it's person to person, unless you talk to the person you're calling, you don't pay. That's right. At six o'clock in the morning, I call the Washington uh, office for the uh, the Russian office. Yeah, and probably the embassy there, right? The embassy. And they, yeah. they say, I talk to everybody. For hours, I keep calling. I got the, the the operator. I'm talking to the window washer. I'm talking to the cook. I'm talking to everybody. Nyet, 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 nyet. All nyet. Finally, the operator from Moscow calls and says, Mr. Khrushchev, no speak it English. You speak it with Vorishov, interpreter? I said, yes, 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 I will. Fine. And I remembered that my father, who was fluent in, fruish, uh, in, in uh, Russian, would laugh when Khrushchev was here banging his shoe on the podium because he'd say, the interpreter made that sound so good for our palatable, it's palatable for our American ears, you know? Yeah. Very Victorian in attitude. He didn't say that at all. He was, you know, blaspheming, let's put it that way. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, uh, so he says, to me, we know all about you. Let me, and of course, I'm getting no's in, in, in at the embassy. Of course. The, the interpreter says to me, I'll tell you what, call back in 30 minutes because he said, we know all about you here in Russia. We we see your movies, etc." cetera. And, and he said, why don't you talk to your congressman or your senator about traveling here? And by now, I am not so happy anymore. And I said, what in the hell does my congressman have to do with traveling in your country, in the Soviet Union? This is not political. This is not politics. This is a matter of the heart. I don't even know if my grandmother is alive or dead at this point. I want to come and I want to bring my parents who have not been there in 35 years and I don't want them detained because I had been told that the, the Russians could right. detain them as primary citizens of the Soviet. And he said, I must have pushed the right button, Michael, because he said, call the Russian embassy again, which I did. And this time I was immediately connected to the first secretary who became, believe it or not, the, the statesperson for Lithuania eventually. And within 48 hours, 
my papers were signed, sealed, and done, and we were on a plane on Pan Am, God rest their soul, to Moscow, and then doubled back to Lithuania. And wow, was that a story. My grandmother had been moved miraculously upon notice of our arriving, the Americans, into a country that you couldn't get into unless you were a very big muckamuck in the Communist Party. Yeah. She was moved by miracle in a big fancy ambulance from the Klaipeda out of the, the village that she lived in on the Baltic Sea to Kaunas, the second biggest city, into a big hospital. And I say hospital with a smile and with a loving smile because it was the best staff, the best doctors, the best nurses you could hope for, but that hospital didn't even have aspirin. And this is the 60s. Yeah. This, this is how a communist system works. So needless to say, I found it miraculous and I thank God for this every day because being an avid anti-communist, I did so many broadcasts for Voice of America that were heard in Lithuania illegally because if they caught you with a shortwave radio, not only did they take your radio, you went to jail. Wow. And so the people that heard my voice really fought for their freedom. And I salute the young people that fought and were killed by Russian Soviet tanks and guns and freed Lithuania. And I saw it under the communist system twice and I never hope to see it under that system again. I hope to never see America under that system. Yeah. Let's just say insane. that I thank God for that. Yeah. I, it's such an amazing story. You know, and, and if I remember right, um when when you brought her to America, um she she got to go on Carson. Yes, they had followed it like the perils of Pauline. I had done the show many times and talked about my grandmother and so on and so forth. Yeah. But it's it's hard for us Americans, uh, even those of us who came from other places and appreciate what America has to offer, but it's hard for us to understand that there are systems that don't work the same way as we do. Right. There are not free and open to say what you want countries in this world. And, and we are so blessed. And so when I did those shows, I'm not sure a lot of people quite understood why I, this young Hollywood girl, was worried about some old lady in Lithuania. But I think when she got here and she came on the show and visited, not speaking a word of English, but only in Lithuanian, with Johnny, who was so taken aback by her, as was America. And it was just amazing how many letters of greeting and how many cards of prayers and mass cards that I got for my grandmother. And, and to this day, I say, thank you, thank you, thank you, darling Americans, for giving a damn one way or another and, and helping me and uh, praying for her. I, I mean, it's it's a it's a very heartwarming story. It's a it's an amazing story of perseverance. I I, I love it. And and getting to hear it from you is is a real treat it kind of it, it it's inspiring to not give up when you're facing something that seems impossible well i wish i could apply that to my career <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite people in in the world uh I, I worked with when he was on rawhide and that's clint eastwood yeah who has been a longtime friend and do you know that it took me 20 years, Michael, to get him to be the honoree for the Thalians. And I mean, we've had everybody from Frank Sinatra through. What was his reluctance? He's just kind of not big on braggadocio. He wants to kind of be yeah. by himself. You know, uh, he he just didn't like being the center of attention. And Lord knows he should be the center of attention. Yeah. Because he he deserves it. He's a, a proud and wonderful American, and I'm crazy about him and have always been absolutely mad for him. But imagine 20 years to get him to say yes. You didn't give up, though. No, I didn't <laughs> give up. I did not give up. 
I kept trying. I'm still trying for uh, for Tom. Um, Hanks? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Tom Hanks, speaking of good Americans. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd like to get Tom well, he's Hanks. He's deserving. I get a letter back every once in a while. Keep trying. I can't do it. I've got this. Blah, 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 you know, he's another one that's a little reticent. Yeah. But uh, uh, I'll keep trying. I'll tell You'll him I'm at him. death's door and he better come quick. You'll get him. Well, Ruta, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time with us today. This is, is amazing. I could talk to you till tomorrow. Well, let's. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, dear friend. It is such a privilege to share your audience with you. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And again, to all of you who have paid any attention to Rudely for whatever reason it may be and especially you dear Michael thank you thank you thank you thank you consider your darling asses kissed god bless you know that is one of the best things that has ever been said to me on this program <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much uh, uh Ruta. This has been the best a couple quick things before yeah. Before we go, I know you've got the uh, gala coming up this December for uh, Gary Sinise, um, and you've got the book that's that's out, of course. Anything else that you're working on that we can kind of keep an eye out for? Well, mostly I'm concerned that anybody within hearing or seeing distance uh, support the Thalians because we're doing such important work. Uh, I am going to be appearing in Palm Springs, if anybody comes from your neck of the woods to beautiful yeah. Palm Springs, uh, in February, I will be appearing in the Purple Room. And that's a great place. That's where uh, Lucy's daughter, uh, yeah. little Lucy, appears, Lucy Arnaz. And uh, so I'm hoping anybody within earshot will turn up for that. Of course. And uh, I will come and visit you, you in your to. neck of the woods one of these days. I sometimes come a little further north of you to the uh, festival when they have it for Andy Griffith for that oh, show. Yeah. So then I'll be not too far away and I can do a hop, skip and jump over and you can take me out for a martini. I absolutely will. We, we'll host you here at the studio and there's a bar next door. We'll take you right. <laughs> and if you come my way, you've got my number, darling, in more ways than one. <laughs> no and i'm out there all the time so i definitely will, will read so it. you will give me a buzz and come on over yep. and you can see the house that rita hayworth lived in love to that's amazing that's amazing well rita are you are you on social media i have I on social media my my i'm on facebook okay my darling judy tries to cover it for me if i can't and so by all means do say hello that way Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, Ruta, you got an open invitation. So anytime you want to come back, you please let me know. We'll get thank you. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. I love you. And I thank you for sharing your audience with me. Bye all. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hold on one second. I've been blessed on this podcast to have uh, just amazing people on here. Legendary people. Uh, just an honor to speak with uh, Ruta. It's amazing. I, a, as soon as um, her, her people reached out, you know, I knew exactly who she was and uh, could not wait to speak with her. And, and I meant that I, I could talk to her all night. I didn't want to hold her up. And I would, you know, as a gentleman, I would never reveal a lady's uh, age, uh, but I'm guessing she's probably older than you think she is. I mean, she was acting in the late 40s, early 50s. Um, just amazing. I mean, she's she's so much energy. She's out there, you know, working so hard for uh, uh, for the Thalians and and everything that she's doing. It's just it's just amazing. I, I it's inspirational that. Um, that she's able to do all of that. I, I hope that I'm as uh, uh, vibrant um, at that age. It's just amazing. Just amazing. She was so wonderful to, uh, to talk to. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you just between us, because I think the, um, the Thalians, the Thalens, Thalians, they're uh, an amazing organization. I hope you'll check them out. They do uh, uh, just terrific work. I think they've raised something like uh, 50 or 60 million 
uh, dollars for uh, for mental health over the last you know however many years. It's it's pretty remarkable. Um, so definitely check them out if you can help them. It's a worthwhile charity to do that. But every time I hear the name, all that pops in my head is that that's a race on Star Trek, which it's not. It's I believe it's Tholians. Uh, but it always cracks me up when I hear it because that's where my mind goes, you know, as a, a nerdy kind of a, a geeky guy. That's that's where my mind goes. So it always always amuses me when uh, when I hear the name. There obviously there's no way we could cover everything that uh, that Ruta has done. But let me mention some of my favorite things that she's been involved with. She uh, she was uh, Diana in Witness for the Prosecution, one of, one of the great movies out there. She played Letty on Funny Face. Obviously, she was one of the brides on Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, which is one of the the earliest Western movies that I remember watching when TBS first came uh, on my TV set. You know, they they showed that one quite a bit. Uh, so I've seen that one multiple times. She's terrific in it. But then going forward, just the TV shows that she's been a part of, and I'm going to name a few of them. Uh, it's not close to the full list. So let me run through. Bonanza, Gunsmoke, um, Rawhide, her Twilight Zone episode was amazing. It was um, it was kind of a Fountain of Youth episode. So it was, I believe, her husband that was uh, a very old man, but he was aging backwards, basically. It was a really good episode. Um, she was on, let's see, Perry Mason, Gomer Powell. Really good episode of Gomer Powell. Marcus Welby, which was another TBS rerun show that, that I caught early on. She was on Andy Griffith and Mayberry RFD, uh, Wild Wild West, The Flying Nun, The Lucy Show, Murder, She Wrote, Charles in Charge, Love Boat, Benson, Fantasy Island, um, Simon and Simon, Mork and Mindy, Love American Style, The Mod Squad, uh, Chips. She uh, played Joyce on Roseanne, who I think was um, a friend of the actress playing Roseanne's mother on the show, if I remember right. Um, she even voiced a character on Power Rangers. She did, um, I believe there was a superhero show that she was a part of. May have been Batman. I may be remembering that one incorrectly, but just unbelievable, the stuff that she has done. And then, of course, she was the host with Alan Trebek, um, on High Rollers, and she did talk shows with uh, Regis. She's done just, uh, it's incredible, just incredible. And then the story about her grandmother, amazing. And, and she gave you a very quick version of it. I would urge you to check out um, her book, um, Consider Your Ass Kissed. Cracks me up every time I hear it. Uh, the stories in it are amazing. She also did a movie, and, and the name of it's escaping me, but it had the entire Rat Pack in it, like all of them, and her. Just amazing. Just amazing. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to try to rein it in. You know I'm a fan, and I can, at times, fanboy just a little bit. This is one of those times. So I hope... Uh, Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please, if you're finding us for the first time, thank you for, for tuning in. Love to have your support. You know, we're a, um, and those that are uh, repeat listeners probably get tired of my, my spiel, but I'm so proud of the fact that, you know, this is a two-person operation. It's just me and my son, Brett. Brett does all the hard stuff, the editing, the marketing, all of that stuff. Occasionally will appear on camera. It's just us. A little, we're in a small town in West Virginia, St. Albans, West Virginia, and we just did this as a way to connect as a father and son. No plans or hopes that it would ever lead to anything, but it did. We amazingly, thanks to you, gained an audience. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named us one of its top 100 podcasts. We came in at number 82, which you're saying, well, that's okay. Well, then when you think of the fact that there's 15 million podcasts out there coming in at number 82 is not too bad for a, uh, for a, for a little podcast out of West Virginia. So 
all of that to get to the point that we would love to have your support. And there's a couple of easy ways to do it, and it's free. First one I just mentioned, if you could go to IMDB, that's I-M-D-B, and I repeat that a couple of times because of my accent, uh, .com, just look up the Two Opinionated Podcasts. That's all you got to do. As soon as the page comes up, that helps us out, just that traffic on the page, and it's free. And the other way, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more, please, if you like to watch, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Please just subscribe. It's free as well. That really does help us out. If you're a listener, just subscribe wherever you're listening at, and that'll help us. We've done almost 700 episodes now. Uh, we've been doing it for almost five years. You can find all of those, audio and video, on our website, MeisterCon.com. So please check us out there. If we are doing something in studio, it'll be on there. If we're going on location, like maybe we're going to um, Ruta's house to see where Orson Welles, Rita Hayworth lived, uh, that'll be on there if we're covering a convention. Anything we have going on, be on the website, MeisterCon.com. So please check us out there. Thank you guys so, so much. This has been the best. Till next time. Oh, consider your ass kissed. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated Podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel. And we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, Please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple of easy ways that you can support us, even. If you're not listening or watching all of the time, and we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our our guest list I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like, or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked, but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so so much. Until next time. Bye everybody. <laughs>